One interesting and potentially scary thing about artificial intelligence is it can be used at this juncture to replicate different styles of authors. And if uh, you have somebody who's sufficiently uh, good at the prompts, you can actually generate something that feels like that author would have written it. Now, this is interesting, obviously, for a fan analysis perspective, because if you really love Terry Pratchett or whatever, you can kind of make yourself a Terry Pratchett story real quick, featuring characters like Death that were beloved in his series. Now, on the ethical side, that's a kind of iffy thing. <laughs> I mean, it's a little beyond kind of iffy. But on some levels, there's some fun that could be had here, because as we know, there's people like... Uh, George R. R. Martin, <laughs> who don't actually uh, finish their books, who are not looking at finishing their books. And as you know, uh, George R. R. Martin actually went and took the trouble to try to sue Chat GTP. I think that lawsuit is ongoing uh, because of some of the aspects there. We know that a lot of these AI have been trained on a lot of works out there. Actually, 11 plus of my own books have been training, uh, I guess, Meta's AI in this situation. And so it can replicate a lot of styles very quickly uh, and with very little effort. Now, this is uh, going to transform things very, very quickly. Now, as much as there are ethical considerations to this, you know that people are going to be doing this kind of stuff. And I'm actually, frankly, surprised that somebody hasn't finished The Winds of Winter yet. Let's look at uh, what Vox Day has done, uh, just kind of mocking John Scalzi's style right here as a joke, uh, because this is pretty interesting stuff right here to look at and talk about and see what the implications of it are. So please hit the like and subscribe button as we talk about all things in fiction, especially when it comes to AI and the future. Uh, we are science fiction and fantasy writers here, my friends. And I would love for you to check out uh, my, I wrote this myself, not a, <laughs> The Demon's Eye. It is a fantasy novel. It's classic style fantasy uh, with a strong male lead who's fighting against real evil. I would love for you to read this today. And if you want to check out my other books, that'd be fantastic too. L would love that as well. It's in the description below. And thank you so much for everybody who's been reading and making this a tremendous success. Uh, we just released this in the last month. And uh, yeah, maybe I'm going to be one of the last authors out there as AI is taking over the world. This is pretty wild. So looking at this story right here, uh, Vox Day did a, a, a few things. He made this librarian prompt um, where he was taking uh, different people's styles and, and having them show up in a library. He did it with Larry Coria from Bain Books. And Larry Coria is known for kind of his like shoot em up gun sort of stuff. And of course, it, it delivered exactly that. Uh, then he did one that was a Neil Gaiman style. Uh, he actually had one where uh, it was all about Neil Gaiman positing uh, what it's going to be like in a bathtub uh, because of uh, the recent controversies and the like. If you don't know what happened with the Neil Gaiman situation yet, I have lots of videos on that. That is a whole nother can of worms. Uh, and then he tried John Scalzi. Now, John Scalzi's got different kinds of style here. And as you can see, the librarian of Forgotten Sundays, the first thing you should know about Bibliotheca Absurdia is that it doesn't play by the rules of time physics, or basic human dignity. The second thing, it has a very aggressive late fee policy. I found this out the hard way when I walked in to return a brief history of time travel that you weren't supposed to read yet, about three centuries overdue, and the librarian hit me with a glare you could have curdled over dark matter. You, she said, adjusting her glasses in a way that suggested imminent violence, are exactly why we can't have a uh, nice space time. The librarian at Forgotten Sundays was so tall, no-nonsense woman with a bun tighter than the plot of Kafka novel, and a name tag that read Miss is P. The P stood for something eldritch, I'd asked once. She sighed and stamped don't on my library card response. Now, just right here, you can see a few things of quirky John Scalzi style. If you've read any John Scalzi books, he loves the kind of quirky humor and, and uh, the witty banter sort of thing uh, that is was popularized really by Josh Whedon. Uh, he kind of copied that on that level. Um, and, you know, AI copied him who copied that, right? <laughs> and that's pretty interesting on that level. But, he, you know, he uses kind of some big words here to make it seem like he's uh, smarter than he maybe is. Uh, he's uh, he's talking about not playing by space time or rules or physics. Has a very aggressive late fee policy. That's that snarky that snarky uh, attitude right there. He loves to put things in parentheses like this to like add this kind of. Uh, you know, edgy kind of context to things. So this is exactly what John Scalzi does. And uh, and <laughs> I actually didn't read why this is pure Scalzi yet before as I talked about this. But as you can say, a snarky conversational voice. That's exactly like he does. Scalzi's protagonists talk like this. Very true. Every single time. I've seen it every time. High concept and low stakes. The library that loans out time travel manuals and pushes lateness with doomed timelines. Classic Scalzi absurdity like red shirts, meta narrative, or kaiju preservation society and glorified animal control. Absolutely. He loves to take those uh, other concepts like a Star Trek sort of thing. 
Uh, Red Shirts was then kind of done as Lower Decks as a Star Trek show itself. Kaiju Preservation Society, again, is just taking a concept in the real world and making it absurd. And, uh, of course, he's got a new one. Uh, the moon uh, turns into a thing of cheese. It's ridiculous. Bureaucratic satire. He likes to do that kind of stuff. Pop culture literate humor. Uh, the jokes about Kafka. Uh, of course, it embeds de- geekery like a DNA splicer. Right there. <laughs> uh, women who won't suffer no fools. He loves those uh, strong females in there that are uh, that are dominatrix kind of style, kind of whipping you in that. And sudden scale shifts. So, so this did this very, very well. And, uh, of course, they added different librarian things based on this same prompt and, uh, and did a bunch of different things on this level. So it actually can analyze why it seems like these famous authors and the like. Now, this is pretty interesting. I've actually attempted to do this with uh, uh, somewhat lower tier authors uh, like Lois McMaster Bujold, who's one of my favorite authors. And I would say that it did not get the style right. It may have, it got the, I'd say, um, plot elements right but it didn't get the prose right and I think it just didn't under it it understood like reviews of her work and kind of like uh, what people thought of her work more than actually what it uh, understood of her work so it's not perfect on that level yet uh, but that's kind of crazy. I mean, if, if Lois McMaster Bujold's not writing Miles Vorkoskin novels now, and I want to read a Miles Vorkoskin novel, we are actually getting to the point where I can kind of like, if I have an idea for it, which is the, the key point, and that's where a lot of people are going to lose it on AI and not understand things. You have to have the idea uh, that makes kind of sense and, and give it a prompt that's going to go in the direction that it goes, kind of that makes sense with that, or it won't come up with something that style but I can come up with an idea that feels like a Vorkosigini idea and feels like it would happen in that universe but it but it doesn't do the prose properly now you could probably input it into it and put 6,000 words of her prose into it and have it analyze that prose and have it adjust its prose style to do that as well I'm personally not going to do that because I have better things to do with my time but if somebody's a super fan of these sorts of things This is interesting and kind of weird and kind of creepy all all together. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know what I think of it. Uh, And, uh, you know, it is interesting and it does exist. It is here. I'm I'm withholding judgment for now, Uh, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, the other limitation that AI has at the moment is it really doesn't work after like a few thousand words. It starts messing up with continuity. It starts repeating itself uh, and and things like that. And so it doesn't quite work yet. Again, I think these are this is an early iteration of things as it goes right now, but it's going to get kind of crazy. Now on the on the image side, it's getting a little faster. I made this this morning just for fun, like right before I was recording the video, just so I could record this video. I'm a you know mech fan, and uh, I was like, okay, could I make my own book cover and 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 all that? Uh, just uh, using an AI prompt real quick. And I just added a mech, you know, in front of a mountain in a, in a military science fiction setting. And then I grabbed a, a font that felt kind of military science fiction-y. And I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> so this is pretty wild. Uh, now, it makes me actually... Now, what's interesting on this front is it actually kind of makes me want to write a book. On the on the creative end, I, it, it inspires my creative spirit. I'm sitting here going, wow, I would love to actually see this like kind of like Empire Strikes Back mech situation like in a uh, a snow-covered mountain uh, range uh, and how would that how would that work what would go on with that what would be the military implications kind of makes me want to write in a lot of ways now this is not something I'm likely to uh, put out or anything like that but I just found it fun because this is again just a use of this that's happening more and more often interesting stuff and it's getting crazier by the day I got their iterations and the quality of it is improving so quickly uh, it's kind of really bizarre at this point, and it's getting beyond creepy, uh, but this is where we're at, and so we're going to talk about it. <laughs> and I know that a lot of people are scared and don't even like to admit that the AI stuff exists. I'm sorry about that, um, and a lot of people are going to have some visceral reactions to this, but that's fine. It exists, like I said. Uh, what what should be and could be done with it, uh, that is uh, a different conversation that's up to ethical standards, but oh my gosh, I mean, this is this uh, this book here, or this this at least blurb is really really scalzy it nailed it and that is really really interesting for the future i actually wrote a short story about 10 years ago uh where i was going to uh have a sci-fi writer be a programmer and he was forced to program uh, a program that actually uh apes uh mark twain's style so they could they could just make new mark twain novels because those are always going to be bestsellers 
and uh, and then uh, finds himself unable to get published in the situation of when that happens. We're kind of getting there, uh, and this is exactly what this is. I, I guess I pr- prompted this by about 10 years, uh, and uh, too bad I never published that uh, because I'd, I'd look really cool right now if I did. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think that AI can like really do this? Uh, what, I, I know that some authors don't think so, but like this is pretty wild and pretty dead on. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Hit the like and subscribe button. And please check out my books. Uh, I would love for you to read today. I write these and work really hard every single day, my friends. And this is The Demon's Eye, my new fantasy novel, which I think you'll enjoy. It's in the description below on uh, ebook and print. Thank you for being here. And thank you for following the real fantasy news.